All right, friends, we are back at Cedia 2023. We're at the Harman booth looking at the luxury brand Revel. That's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasalo with AudioHawks. We're here with my friend Jim Garrett. How you doing, Jim? I'm good, Gene. How are you? I'm doing great. You know, the last time I was at Cedia was back in 2019 because there's been so many cancellations between COVID and hurricanes. Yeah. I was just talking to you. The last time we shot a video for Revel was when you had the, the red F328s. Yes. Gorgeous yes, looking color speaker. Yep. I was really impressed with that. So I've got a pair of F328s in one of my reference systems, and that's a staple in a two-channel system there. And I was always wondering, when are you guys going to release in-wall equivalents? And here we are now looking at all these products. I want you to give us a rundown, because you are great at giving rundowns of products. <laughs> I don't remember models as well as you do. You know this stuff down to a science. Why don't you talk about the range of, of Revel, why you have them as an in-wall, back boxes, all that stuff. Sure, sure, yeah. So. This is the Revel Performa Beryllium Architectural Range, and we designed these to do several things. They can be high-end hidden hi-fi, they can be high-end distributed audio, or they can be hidden home theater products. And on top of that, they can also mix and match. So the floor standing loudspeakers speakers that you have, F328s, these would be perfect companions to complete a hidden home cinema system with them, but still have those floor standers there as your main music channel speakers. So there are four models in this range. We've got three in walls and we've got an in ceiling and they use the same drivers that we use in the box loudspeakers. So we took the same one inch brilliant tweeter. We took the same deep ceramic composite cone drivers and put those into the architectural models. So the one that we're standing right in front of here, this is the W228BE. And just to your left there is the F228BE. And a lot of people I'm sure are familiar with that speaker. It's been a very popular model for us. It's won a number of awards there. But we took those transducers and reconfigured it into this in-wall model. And because you can see it's a little bit of a different configuration, we put the eights on the end of the speaker and that allowed us to get the mid-range and a tweeter right into the middle of it. And this whole module here as we look at this is its own separate unit. So we can pull that out and rotate that and let this speaker become a horizontal configuration. If you wanted to do around a fixed screen with those, you could do that. Back boxes are optional. You don't have to have them, but you can certainly add them. That gives you consistency in sound. It minimizes uh, kind of noise abatement into adjacent spaces, if you will. So those are an option for you to do it. Uh, but this is the, the granddaddy of the line here, the W228BE. And then we've got two smaller in walls and an in ceiling model that complete the range. So what's really cool about this speaker, like you said, you only have one skew for the center channel. You yeah. could orient it horizontal or vertical. Correct. A lot of companies forget about that. You know, they, they see the center channel as kind of like an afterthought, and they either have just an MTM or just the regular bookshelf version of an in-wall. It's great that you guys actually have a three-way that's proper both, both vertically and horizontal. Yes. Yeah, and again, if you were going to use 228s or 328s as a floor standard, rotate this module, and then you can use this as a horizontal center channel that's a perfect match for those two loudspeakers. Now, is there a separate charge for back boxes? If you just buy the in-wall, there's an upcharge for the back box? Yeah, so we sell them all individually, so you can buy the speaker module itself and the back box separately. And again, you don't have to have the back box if you don't want it. A lot of people are going to want that from consistency and uh, wherever noise I put it. Noise isolation from the next room. Noise isolation from the next yeah. room, yep. If you're going to put it in uh, a standard stud bay enclosure, I would suggest the glued and screwed method, of course, to try to get a good enclosure out of a uh, wood frame stud wall with drywall in it. But they'll work. We are actually demonstrating them on the other side of the wall here, and those do not have back boxes with them. So we can take a listen to those in a little bit and let's sure. check them out. What's the price range on these again? 
So on this model, this is the flagship. So the speaker module itself is $3,500, and the back box is an additional thousand. So if you do a pair of them with the back boxes, it's a $9,000 solution for those. I mean, that's about the price of the uh, box version, right? The box version is maybe a little bit more money. Yeah, the F228 is an $11,000 speaker. So right. a little more cabinetry involved there. And of course, it's got that premium high gloss finish on it. Now, what do you recommend if someone wants to have a completely invisible system they want to round it out with bass. Do you have in-wall subwoofers that would go complement this? We do. So we have the Revel B28W. That's a dual 8-inch in-wall sub-module. Fits in 2x4 construction, as do all of these. So that's a great solution to add some bass to it. And we make a matching amplifier, the SA1000, that's purpose-built to drive one or two of those modules. So the demonstration that we have here, we're actually doing a high-end two-channel system. And we're showing a pair of the 228s with a pair of B28s under it. And we're using a Mark Levinson integrated amplifier to drive that, show off the high performance audio that these things can bring to your house. So I got to plug JBL for a minute. Okay. If you guys are putting in all Revel in-wall system and you have floor space, I really love the JBL 1200P subwoofer because it's not very big footprint. It's a 12 inch driver. It's got a good meaty amplifier in it. Yep. It's gorgeous looking because it's all radius corners. And that thing punches way above its weight class. Even, oh, though, yeah. even though we did CEA 2010 measurements and we didn't get like an extreme base of all grading, every demo I've heard that subwoofer in, whether it was at Audio Advice or just in general at trade shows, that sub has always impressed me, especially when you've got two of them. Oh, yeah. And I'm going to put you on the spot. I want you guys to commit to doing a 15-inch version of that sub. <laughs> Is that possible? That would be a Can very cool sub, yes. yes. Yeah, so I, I agree with you. Uh, that sub is a crowd pleaser. I think it's a very good performing sub. 15 inch version of it would be pretty impressive. So. You know, we're base of hogs, we like big, I, big drivers. I'm with you there. So. Well, well, Jim, thanks for dropping the knowledge. I appreciate that. Guys, if you like this video, please hit the thumb up, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.